In this lesson, we are going to create a procedural asset in Houdini that can be opened up in Unreal Engine 4. These assets can then be controlled in the editor using the Houdini Engine for UE4 plugin. The asset will be a simple building which we will add to the level in this area. Here we are in Houdini where we will start to model the building. Click the Grid tool and press Enter to place it at the origin. Now let's change the size to 5 and 3, and the rows to 4 and columns to 6. This gives us a nice even grid to work with. Next, click on the Box tool and press Enter to place it. Let's look at the network editor and the nodes created by Houdini. Double click on the Box object node to dive inside. Let's change the box size to 0.1 in X and 0.1 in Z. Next, we'll double click and drag the size in Y to center Y and choose Relative Channel Reference and then divide by 2. What this does is keep the base of the box on the ground even if we change the size in Y. Let's change that back to 1. Now click on the top bar of the network editor to go back up to object level where we have our two objects. Next, we'll want to copy the column to the points on the grid. First, let's click in the empty space to deselect everything, and then click on the Select tool and go to the Modify shelf. Click on the Copy to Points tool and then select the column and press Enter. Then select the grid and press Enter again. The columns are lying flat, so we need to deselect Transform using point attributes. Now we have our columns distributed properly on the grid. Let's add a floor above the columns. Click on the Box tool and again press Enter to place it at the origin. Let's set the size of the box to 6 in X, 0 0.05 in Y, and 4 in Z. That's a little too big. We can easily go back and change the size in X to 5.5 and Z to 3.5. Now we're going to take the box and raise it above the columns. You can enter exact values in the parameter pane if you want to, or you can work by eye. In the network view, box select the two object nodes and from the modify shelf, click combine. This takes the two objects and creates a new object with all of the creation nodes merged into one network. In the network editor, press tab and start typing duplicate and then click to place down the duplicate node. Next, connect the two nodes and then set the display flag on the duplicate node. Drag the handle up to add a second floor to our building. We can then use the number of copies parameter to add even more floors. Let's leave it at one copy. We are now going to take this object and build a Houdini digital asset that can be loaded into the Unreal Engine 4 editor. Let's start by selecting all the nodes in the network editor and then going to the asset menu. Select New Digital Asset, which collapses the network into a single node and prompts us to save the asset to disk. Let's call this asset Building and save it on the desktop into a file called building.hda. .hda stands for Houdini Digital Asset. Press Accept. We will use this window later. Press Accept again to close it. We can now load the building asset into the UE4 editor. Let's switch over. Here we will import the asset using the Houdini Engine for UE4 plugin, which was installed earlier. Click on the Import button and find the building asset on the desktop. Click Open and the asset opens in the content browser. Now drag the asset from the browser into the workspace and the asset's going to cook. The geometry is now in place and we can tumble around to see it, but it's too small and doesn't work with our character. Don't you hate when that happens? We can scale it using the transform parameters in UE4, but instead we'll add controls to the asset back in Houdini. There, we'll be able to fix the asset by adding some top-level parameters. Double click on the asset to dive in where we're going to find the procedural network we built earlier. Press Tab and then type Transform and place the node just below the chain. Connect the two nodes and then set the display flag on the Transform node. Also, let's add a normal node into the chain to harden the edges on the columns and floor slabs. Press Tab, type Normal and drop the node right onto the connection line. Now let's go to the Assets menu and open up the properties for the building asset. In this panel, we can now add some top-level parameters which will be available in the UE4 editor. For example, click on the Transform node and then drag the Uniform Scale parameter to the Asset panel. Let's call that Size. Next, select the Duplicate node and drag the Number of Copies parameter over. 
change that to number of floors, and press accept. That saves the changes to disk with the new parameters added to the asset definition. Now let's go back to the UE4 editor where we can keep working with the building asset. In the details panel, we can scroll down and press the rebuild asset button to import the changes. At first, we won't see any changes in the viewport, but in the details panel, we can see that there are two new parameters. One of them is a size parameter, which can be used to scale up the building. Let's make it big enough to suit our character. And we'll tumble around to get a better look. We can now adjust the number of floors to make the building taller. Now if we press play, we can walk around the level and see the building in action. You may have noticed we didn't collide with any columns. We need to set up collision geometry. One way to solve that is to set up a building underscore geo group inside the Houdini asset, but we aren't going to do that here. The other option is to go to the collision complexity parameter and set it to use complex collisions. Now if we press play, we can then walk around the level and collide with the columns. So here we have an asset we can test as part of the level while at the same time we can go back and customize the results. For instance, once we stop the test, we can go back and set the number of floors or set the size. With a bit more work, we could add parameters for the shape and size of the columns, the spacing of the grid, or any other feature we need. Now let's go back to Houdini and add some ramps so our character can climb up the building. Here's our original model, which still only has two levels. We can work with these and the changes will then be transferred to our UE4 asset. Now let's go back into the network and find the box node that defines the floor slab. That will be the box2 node. We're going to add detail by changing the axis divisions to 6, 2, and 4. This matches the grid pattern we set up with the columns. Let's set the display flag for the transform node and add some extra modeling operations. We are going to select the face at the end here, go to the polygon shelf and choose poly extrude. Now drag the handle out to add a lip to the floor slab. Select the face on the side and again poly extrude. You can press Q to repeat the last action. Turn on the transform extrude front option to get a world space handle and drag it out. And then down to just under the ground. And again, select poly extrude and pull out the handle like this. To build the ramp, we had set the display flag on this part of the network. Now let's go back down and set it on the transform node. So now we have the whole model with ramps that are being duplicated with each floor. We can see now that the ramp is landing right where the column is, which won't be good for gameplay. So let's grab the poly extrude node that defines the base of the ramp, and we can move it forward and then pull it up a bit to align with the floor. Now that we have the ramps in place, we can go back to the Assets menu and save the changes to the Houdini asset file. Back in the UE4 editor, we can again rebuild the asset to accept the changes. Now when we tumble around, we can see the ramps in place. Press play and let's walk around the level. As you can see, we can move higher up in the building with our new ramps. This building asset has been created quickly using the procedural techniques found in Houdini. At the same time, it can be customized in the game editor using the high-level parameters built right inside the asset. If we press Escape, then we can go back to the editor and continue to change things. Let's add some more floors to create the right size and shape for our game. This should do it. Press play to retest the level. We can move over to the corner and view the new building with all of its floors. Now you know how to create assets in Houdini that can be used as game art in UE4. These assets can be built by you and shared with other artists working on different game levels. Houdini and Houdini Engine for UE4 create a powerful new way of generating game art that will take you to new heights. Pun is definitely intended.